Hello and uh, thank you for joining me on uh, another video from trainingright.com. Today the topic is Selenium. Uh, if you have to run a script in Selenium, um, you have to know how that script looks like, what kind of language you would be using to write that script, uh, where would you put that script, what kind of tools you would need, um, and when you execute that script, um, what steps you have to take in order for that script to be successful. Well, so there are many moving parts to this. Um, so let's begin. Let's um, talk about uh, uh, a scenario where I am going to, first of all, show you, without involving Selenium, uh, what we are going to test. And then I will use Selenium, and I will show you a script which I have written, and we will run that script using a tool called Eclipse and um, JUnit4. And uh, we will watch the execution of that script step by step and uh, see how that script, after finishing all those steps in it, records or logs the information back and uh, notice that uh, the test, if it is successful, where does it state that the test is successful or where does it say that the test is uh, a, a failure. All right, to begin with, um, I'm going to manually walk you through the application first, um, quickly show you how the application itself is going to work, and then we are going to go and uh, test it using Selenium. The application here, uh, which we would be using under test, is uh, uh, an insurance company uh, called uh, LibertyMutual.com. This is one of the biggest uh, insurance company in the United States and uh, probably in the world. Um, so as you can see here, there's a lot of functionality here, right? Um, in this company, it sells you auto insurance, they sell you home insurance, they sell you life insurance. Um, so what we are going to do is, uh, let's say, um, if you have to get some sort of insurance, whether that is life insurance or home insurance or auto insurance, you you would like to first find out or rather get a free quote, right? And um, we as testers, we are, let's say, assigned uh, this task of uh, checking if this functionality is working or not. So um, I'm going to manually go and then see or uh, try and get a feel of the application. So here we are. When I clicked on that uh, get a free quote, um, what I got here is a drop down box letting me select what kind of insurance I'm going to test. Um, I could go and pretty much choose anything. I, for now, I'm going to go with the renter's insurance. Um, and then later on in our course, uh, I'm going to walk you through the other insurances and uh, we're going to be testing uh, all those other uh, test cases. For now, I'm going to be doing the renter's insurance. Um, after you select the type of insurance you are interested in, the next thing which you have to do here is enter the zip code. Um, let's say I live in Manhattan, and um, the zip code for Manhattan is, uh, there the are many zip codes there, but uh, this happens to be uh, one of the zip codes of, of Manhattan. So I want to find out uh, what is uh, the quote for uh, a renter property uh, in this zip code. Of course, um, it's not just going to give you based on the zip code, so it's it's going to ask me some more information, right? Uh, that's um, that's pretty predictable. So here we are. It is asking us for some information. It is asking me for my name. Um, right now, I'm just going to use some name. Uh, let's say I'm going to use um, uh, how about Harry Potter. Right. The street address could be anything. He lives, let's say, on the Fifth Avenue. So I'm going to make up uh, some address here. Uh, 220 Fifth Avenue. And um, doesn't matter if apartment or whatever. So I'm not going to be putting that information. OK, you might be wondering, like, uh, how uh, I have not entered New York. How did it pop up? That is because when we entered the zip code, it automatically brought that, that it, it, it is in New York. If I had entered a different zip code there, it would have brought that uh, city in here. Anyway, um, when was Harry Porter born? 
I'm just I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna be let's say uh, 0101 and uh, the year who knows uh, 1981. Um, his email address is going to be we're just gonna make it up as uh, hpotter at uh, gmail.com. Okay. What are the information it is asking me? Nothing. That's that's the information about about the renter information. That's what it is asking. Um, I want you to keep an eye here, right? Uh, it says here that frequently asked questions and all that. What it is going to do right now is it has enough information about uh, uh, the individual who is seeking the quote that it could go ahead and assign a quote ID, which is going to pop up here. Um, how do I know? Um, well, I I tested this application. Um, so that's why I know. But uh, it would be given in our BRD, right? Um, um, and the requirement document would display, uh, would, would rather include all the details of it. So um, here we go. We hit continue. Now it is taking up the information. It is processing your information, probably going to be writing it into the database. And uh, uh, there you go. This is what I was talking about. So it had enough information to create what is called a quote ID. And that is the quote ID. Um, now imagine this. Um, let's say uh, when we are testing, they say that, okay, as soon as you enter the information, we would like to find out. One of the test cases is to go and capture the information uh, which the application is spitting out. So the application is giving us out this uh, ID. So we have to capture that. So I'm going to be showing you as how to capture this information. Um, so if you if you pay attention, we are inputting something into the application and we expect the application to um, uh, provide an output which we will be capturing as a part of our, our test. Right now I'm doing it manually, so probably I'm going to be taking this and writing it um, into my notes saying that, okay, when I entered Harry Potter information with the zip code and his date of birth and his address, it gave me a, a court ID. Okay, but uh, actually we have to write a test case uh, uh, using some script, and that's a part of our automation. All right. Okay, I'm not done with the uh, with, with the whole test case here, so let's continue. It is asking you some information about your, uh, if at all, if you have any current in insurance. Okay, let's go take a look. Uh, do I have any current insurance? I could say that yes or no, whatever. So I feel like just saying yes, so I'm going to. Uh, choose that during the past five years have you had a claim or loss so it doesn't matter what the application is we as testers we have to pay attention to the fact that there is based on the selection of the user whether it is yes or no um, yes or no is given in the form of these radio buttons um, there's some information which is in the form of this drop down and as I entered in the previous page, some information about uh, um, Harry Porter's name and address that was entered into into a box. So uh, we need to uh, have a sharp eye and, and notice what is happening in here. So answering these questions, uh, we are inputting the data into the application. Okay, Liberty Mutual Insurance, do you currently have an auto policy with a uh, I guess not. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's kind of like uh, something called cross-selling. If you don't have an insurance from Liberty Mutual, it is kind of like, you know, um, trying to sell you that saying that, hey, you could save 10% on your renter's insurance if you have blah, blah, blah. Right now, I am going to uh, not fall for it. So I'll just ignore that and then continue. Okay, some few other uh, questions um, uh, they are asking me is uh, property information. Okay, the I am going for the insurance, the renter's insurance, right? So they are asking me some questions about okay, in that building, how many units are there? Um, doesn't make uh, you know much of a difference to me. I could say that okay, one or two or whatever. Uh, primary material on outside walls. Okay, again, in our as you can see, I have I have a lot of data here, right? I could I could be picking and choosing anything in here now um, it doesn't matter that that looked like a little long to me so I selected that um, now in our test uh, data which we would be provided uh, um, by our team lead or the project manager 
um, we will be having all the different set of data which we have to pass. So in this test case, imagine that if I have to test uh, for all these combinations, I have to test for wood exterior, I have to test for aluminum or plastic siding, brick veneer or uh, you know different things if I have to. So um, manually I could I could go ahead and then select one. Um, in my next test, let's say it has to be a different set of data. It has to be that or that. So uh, my my automation is all about how first of all how I can write uh, a script that is going to input some information, some data in it which I wanted to input. <clears throat> and that is going to be our introductory uh, script. So we will just go ahead and then run with one set of data. And then when the script completes successfully, that means that, okay, my, I have a good script. I have written a good script. Now, the next um, enhancement which I am going to do is uh, uh, run the script, but with a different set of data. So now if you're talking about different set of data, uh, the question is, where is that data coming from? Well, the data could come from anywhere. It could come from an Excel spreadsheet. It could come from, um, from a database, SQL Server database, Oracle database. So in my course, what I am going to do is I am going to walk you through step by step. In the beginning, like what I'm doing right now, I'm manually doing this, right? And after I finish this, I am going to show you, if at all, if I have to create a script, how I'm going to create that script. Um, am I going to be using Notepad to write that script? Um, if I write that script, what kind of language would I use to write that script and all that, right? And where would I put that script? How would I run that script? And when I am running, where would I pass the information? What information? This is some information which I'm passing, which is number of units in this building. One, two, three, four. That's some data which I'm passing. So in my script, how do I pass the data? And uh, if it is only one set of data, maybe I could hard code it, right? But how good of a of a script or an automation is that if I if I'm hard coding my data, right? That's that's not efficient because my automation says that if 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 I am investing my time. Um, or if the company is hiring uh, an individual who is going to be charging you X amount of dollars, we better make use of his skill set. And his skill set is to automate the testing process. So how is he going to automate? By not hard coding the data. He's going to read the chunk or the set of data from wherever. So that's that's eventually will be going there. Anyways, so continuing with the test um, or with this uh um, checking of the website, we pass the property information. Now it's the safety information. Okay, there are some yes or no questions. So I'm gonna just leave it as this. Uh, and uh, continuing further, it is asking you uh, some additional information like uh, how many miles is the residence from the nearest fire station? Well, let's see what they have here. Uh, zero to three miles, uh, 3.1 to five miles. Uh, I guess uh, if I'm too far from a fire station, uh, probably my insurance is going to go up, right? Um, well, that could be the case, right? So, I mean, that's the reason they're asking all of these relevant questions, right? So, uh, depending on what I choose, it might give me um, a different quotation, right? Or different uh, amount they, they could be charging me, right? Okay, well, let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to be choosing that. How many feet uh, is the residence from the nearest fire hydrant? Okay, it is, um, again, the, the farther you are, probably my insurance cost is going to go up. Uh, I'm just going to check uh, under 500 feet. Uh, do I have any dogs? Um, no. Um, okay, um, the insurance company um, reward you for your good character for your good behavior, I guess. So it is asking you, okay, if you're educated, if you're highly educated, probably we have some uh, uh, discounts for you. So 
um, it's asking me for whatever, right? So uh, I have a master's, um, so that's what I'm going to put, uh, state, uh, whatever. Right now, I'm going to just choose, um, <coughs> excuse me, from New Jersey uh, College. Uh, it could be any college from New Jersey, uh, New Jersey, um, Princeton University or whatever, right? Um, uh, here, employment status. Am I working unemployed? Whatever. Um, I guess uh, I would say I'm um, uh, employed. Uh, current employer optional. Uh, I'm not going to select that. Okay. Hit continue. Uh, well, <laughs> they're asking for Harry Potter social security number. Uh, am I going to give one or am I going to say no thanks? Okay. I would, I will click uh, no thanks. Um, and, uh, Alrighty, it's thinking it's doing something behind the scenes, probably writing it into the database and trying to get some uh, um, information for me, which is, uh, there you go, here it is. Uh, and the application is returning me some information. What is the information it is returning me? That, um, hey, uh, it is going to cost you $17.17 .17 per month, which is going to be $206 a year, all right? And that's uh, basically what it, it is returning some data back to me. I might have to capture that data and then say that in my test cases, I have to report that, okay, for this set of input data, which is a uh, Harry Porter who is living in New York City, who was born in the year 1981, and uh, he is, um, let's say, um, he has a master's degree from Princeton University, and he has a uh, uh, no dogs and his uh, apartment is um, under 500 feet from uh, the fire hydrant and uh, he is under like a mile from the fire. So based on all that information, that was the input information and it is giving us the output information. So my test case would be if you if you input a set of data, you should get um, certain output. All right. So that's the test case. Okay. Manually, we have done that. We have we just accomplished one. Um, um test case here right okay now if i have to do the same in uh, selenium how am i going to do that okay the whole course is about that all right uh, or at least the first two three weeks would be about that and then eventually we'll be getting into what is called uh, a data-driven framework so i'm gonna uh, walk you through and show you how uh, or where you would uh, write the script and where you would uh, uh execute that script and all that okay in in selenium um there are three different versions of selenium uh, at least uh till today i would say that there is a selenium ide which is a record and play tool and then there is an rc server um a remote control server and then there is something called a web driver um uh, right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you quickly into what is uh, an rc server um so for me to write that script I have to use a program, some some tool I have to use, and that tool is called Eclipse. So I would be using Eclipse um, as the tool to write my script. All right. So I have downloaded Eclipse, um, and uh, I have a shortcut to Eclipse um, on my desktop, and uh, uh, basically I would be, um, hmm, I would be. I would be starting Eclipse. Uh, here it is. Uh, in my course, I'm going to walk you through where you should go and get Eclipse from. These are all open source uh, tools, meaning that you are not buying anything. You're not paying anything for this. This is free of cost. And uh, um, you have to Google and then you could go to Eclipse.org uh, and then you could download it. In fact, when you join the course, uh, I'm going to be providing you with all the links uh, or better yet, you don't even have to do any hard work um, because uh, you could be downloading it. Um, once you register, I will be giving you uh, the link from my site from where you could be downloading it. Um, there is no installation required, but uh, on day um, one or day two of our course, I'm going to walk you through what are the different tools which are necessary for us uh, to learn Selenium. Where do you get that? How do you install it? So. Um, for now, as you can see that I have already uh, downloaded Eclipse and it doesn't get installed, by the way. It's a package which you run. So there's nothing being written into the registries and all that. Um, it comes back and then it asks you, 
um, select a workspace. Workspace is a folder where it is going to save your code. Whatever code you write, it gets saved there. So it is prompting me that on, on, on C drive, I will create a folder called workspace and it is going to save it there. Uh, that's fine. I'm just going to take it as this. I'll say that, okay. Um, so now it is going to open what is called the IDE or the development environment for um, Eclipse. Okay. What is this tool? This tool basically helps me to write code in Java, right? So I will be writing code in Java. In fact, you all will be writing code in Java. And uh, uh, Java is a programming language. Now, when you write that code, you could be writing that code in what? Notepad or WordPad or um, Microsoft Word. Uh, no, because everything has got a purpose. Microsoft Word is to is to <laughs> make your resumes, right? Or to write letters. Uh, that's the purpose of that. Uh, likewise, uh, you know, every tool, Excel uh, is basically a spreadsheet. You will do some accounting, some data would be putting it in there, and then you could add, subtract, multiply some formulas. So every tool has got its own functionality. Likewise, uh, uh, you have uh, Eclipse, uh, and what Eclipse does is it 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 will take your Java code and then it will execute it, it will compile it, and then it will it's a it's a it's an environment for you to write the code which can be compiled and then uh, it will do whatever it is supposed to do depending on what code you write. Okay, so here is. Um, in my course, I'm going to walk you through everything, the environment, right? So what are these things, right? Uh, what is this package explorer? What is JUnit? How, how does JUnit come over here? What is this console here? Um, you have Java docs here. And, and if any problems, uh, it's going to... So I'm going to do all that. Right now, let's take a look into what I have here. So what you see here is, is basically a, a function. It's a function, right? So this function I've written in in Java, and what is as you can see, what is the function doing? Now I'm not going to go into the details because it's a demo class, right? But when we um, get into the course, I'm going to be writing this code right in front of you, step by step, and then as we write, as we create a function, we will execute that function. We will run that function. And when we run that function, we want to see what it does. So right now, um, what we have here is, okay, the functionality which I, which I am supposed to test is uh, go to the home page, uh, click on what is called a get free quote link, which we did, and then um, that Ajax uh, pop-up will come up, which is asking you, uh, for the selection of ins insurance choice and zip code and all that and then you go into the about uh, part of it where we will be capturing the uh, code ID and then you go into the current insurance new page now if you if you think you're you're like where is that right and what is this green thing and where is all that right now uh, all that code I have I have written here right all that code I have written here as you can see it might it might be like gibberish to you right now it might be French to you right now but um, trust me when we are in that course when I walk you through in that course it will make all sense so what we are doing here just just to take a look at this at this line here um, what I'm doing is I'm telling uh, hey selenium go and uh, open this website libertymutual.com Right, uh, there's something here five 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 five. There's something uh, Chrome. I mean, I'll I'll explain you what those things are. Basically, what it is is uh, between between this this script which we have written, right? This script is going to whatever we have written here, right? Um, just to give you an idea, I'm asking it to go and click, as you can say, click on that get a free code, and then after that, I'm saying that go and enter a zip code of 10018 I'm passing so uh, I'm saying type it I'm saying click on it and I'm saying select right so I'm um, I have written this right so as this is the code here right in Java right so this is this is the code but the code has to pass this information which is Harry Potter 
pass to who? It has to pass this application to this to this website, right? Now, um, the way it is going to pass that information to the website is uh, basically when we open the website, this code, right? This code will hand over, will call, will call what is called a Selenium server, right? And that Selenium server you have to start. And as you can see here, I have started that Selenium server right um how do you start that selenium server whatever it is now this when you look at it the first time you're like what the heck man you know but it is trust me it is so simple one line of code and you know you don't even have to worry about it and and it's not that we are cutting corner this is all what it is y you know the first time you do anything you know you're very scared you're overwhelmed like you know what is this I mean anything it is right uh, but as you keep doing you will understand so my job here is to make you understand you know all of these things right how how what happens if this is not there right how do you open this where do you get this from what is the function why do you need this right so that's 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 why I'm here, right? I am going to walk you through all that, and then I'm going to show you as how to write the script. It it looks like very difficult, right? It, when you look at that, whoa! I mean, there's so many things the guy had done. But guess what? It is so easy. It is like you are telling Selenium, uh, please open, open, open what? Open this browser using Google Chrome. Google Chrome is a browser, right? So there are other browsers. What other browsers? Internet Explorer, um, Apple Safari, um, or Firefox. So you could be using Selenium. You could be testing a application on any browser, right? Any browser. So you got to know how, by the way, how can I enter Internet Explorer here? Well, that's why we have to join that course and then learn as how i could can i can i put anything in here absolutely not i mean depending on you know you you cannot be putting ie there and expect that it, it should work so what is what what is for internet explorer what is for firefox that's what i'm going to be showing you in fact i'm going to be walking you through all that so right now anyway so this is going to take you to that address using google chrome and do what and it is going to perform these steps. What are the steps? It is going to open it. It is going to maximize, maximize the browser. Even though the browser is going to be like not maximized, it's going to maximize that. Then it is going to go and click on that, uh, on that link, right? Get a free code. Now you might be wondering like, uh, how does it know it? That's, that's what we will be doing. There are, there are supporting tools out there which will help you. Something called, um, firebug right i'm gonna uh, show you how to use a firebug right and uh firebug will, will help you understand all of these things id equals that id equals that i mean it is i don't remember i, I it, it is not easy to find that but then if you know how to use that firebug this becomes a piece of cake like like literally in like less than three seconds you would be able to know what is that 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 right and that's what i'm going to do anyways let me run this script and and um if everything is all right if i if i run this script so this is eclipse right if i run this script then it has to open the browser and it has to perform all those actions for me right so in order to run i would come in here and then i would say run but before i run in the package explorer i got like tons of things in here if you see i am running what liberty mutual renters insurance right so this is this is the most the most simplest um simplest uh, class i am running right liberty mutual renters insurance now after i finish this i i am enhancing it there is phase one to it phase two to it phase three phase four what am i doing in phase one what am i doing in phase two phase three phase four i mean just for the heck of it if i go into phase uh uh phase two right um and and i'm gonna walk you through later on uh, what is that default package? What is that source and all that? Okay, uh, this this was the original one, 
this is the phase one that means that there is an enhancement here what is the enhancement see here i'm showing you how to use firefox how to use google chrome how to use safari how you would be putting that right so that's that's what and you might be wondering like hey what is that string browser what is that string url right so i'm talking about uh if if a data uh needs to be passed into the application rather than hard coding the data right in there we could be we could be putting the data into what is called variables so in my phase one i will be talking about variables what are variables how do you declare variables how do you assign values to variables and all that right so as as we progress i'm gonna be doing things like that so that's going to be the phase two and as you can see here i am no longer hard coding the phone area code is string phone area code str phone exchange str phone um last four and if you go here in the first one um it was not like that so the phone number if you see the phone number is two one two five 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 one two one two right and and here what i have done is i have replaced that with variables so we have to see how to do that right so how to create those variables how to pass information so here is the declaration of all those variables here is the assignment of some data to the variable so we are still in phase one likewise we'll go into phase two and in phase two what will you be learning in phase two what will i be doing in phase two now we are done with the variables so what what next um in phase two in phase two basically what i'll be doing is i'll be showing you as how to write functions so if you can see i i have functions here uh my my main test my main test if you see here this is the test liberty mutual renters insurance right my main test over here my main test was so many lines right so the main test is test liberty mutual renters insurance right and over here test liberty mutual um, renters insurance my my test is just five lines right because what i have done i have i have written functions and i'm calling those functions there's something called configure settings there is something called insurance selection now how do you do that that's what i'm going to show you so i will write some functions what does it take to write functions well there's the you know we will talk about how to write a function in java i'm going to teach you um you know the basic stuff in java is how to write a function and then we will come and then write that function here each function is is doing some work what work it is doing this one insurance selection by zip code so it is this is a function in this function i will be putting in renters insurance and then the zip code and the next function is information about you what information i have to write about me my first name my last name my address right my street address my phone my exchange and then that's that's that function my email address that's that function so we will be doing it so as you can see we are gradually moving to perfection so likewise i'm going to go into phase three and in phase three i'll be doing something more what is that something more we'll be talking about writing um loops for loop if i have to run that test five times or ten times how do i do that for that i have to write a for loop right so how difficult is it to write a for loop i mean in the first class if i if i talk to you about functions for loops uh, writing the code you're gonna you're just gonna run away right because who wants this but gradually i'll be introducing you to these topics and trust me it is easy it is very easy you will learn it in no time now one thing which i really need from you guys is lots of practice i want you to practice a lot and then you will eventually you will get it um okay uh anyway coming back and then uh, let me show you the very uh basic script and uh how it runs so i'm gonna be running i'm not running any any i'm not running uh any what do you call enhancements here i'm just running the basic uh, script okay here we go um in order to run that um it is better if we have our browsers uh closed so uh if the browser is open i'm just gonna make sure that the browser is closed right and the, we're gonna run that okay according to this uh, i am going to uh use google chrome so if you watch here right when i run it if you watch uh basically what it is going to do is 
it is going to, as you can see here in a second, um, it will start um, to, where are we running? Okay, I guess, uh, okay, uh, I am running what is called, uh, uh, Star Chrome is, is still uh, Firefox. Um, okay, so it, it started, and uh, it is putting that information now. I I have my you know hands uh, um, stretched and I'm relaxed. I'm just uh, um, you know sitting and watching uh, the script perform whatever I told it to perform. What did I tell it to do? I said, okay, go to libertymutual.com, enter the zip code, and enter all this information step by step and all that right so it is performing all of this whatever i ask it to do so um let's say if i right now i guess uh it is now you might be wondering like uh why is it taking time what is happening in here now all that can be controlled now it it, it takes a little while right so all that can be controlled the reason um it was taking time because uh i had inserted in there um, that it should take about three seconds between each step it is going to perform. So you could control all that. Now, if you take a look right now, it is doing, do you currently have a uh, home condo or whatever? Right now, it will be doing this part and uh, it selected no, this popped up and then it entered that. Um, okay, now, as you can see, it is going to s select the one on the top, which is one and primary material on uh, blah, blah, blah. So. Uh, every two three seconds it is doing whatever it is supposed to do um, and the script is getting executed and uh, let's see what happens at the end of it uh, will it uh, pass will it fail uh, what is a pass here the pass uh, is uh, if I get something output right um, part part of it is passed because I already have this code right now let's see if we get uh, a monthly payment so um, Let's see, we're waiting on that, we're waiting on that, we're waiting on that, and lo and behold, what we have is $17.17. .17. So the application did give us an output value, right? Okay, if I go back into my code, you see this green line here. That means that my test is a pass. Everything is good, my test is a pass. All of these steps did perform the way they were supposed to perform, right? Now, if I just change something in here, right? Let me just change, it's no longer Harry Porter, let's say. Uh, I wanna do it for um, um, George. Right, and uh, let's say he lives on um, what five five five, right? Main Street, and he is uh, his date of birth is not seventy one, maybe it's nineteen fifty one. Um, we're gonna change his phone number. Uh, he's in Washington, so two o two. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna change something here. Um, five five. So uh, let's see if we change the zip code. I am interested in seeing a different zip code in here. So this is 10018 is uh, uh, New York. Uh, I don't know the zip code for Washington. I'm just gonna try something like 60502. I don't even know what that is, but I'm just gonna try that. So um, now with this set of data, I'm hoping that I would have uh, what do you call uh um i would have what do you call uh uh that should go here um with this uh i will i will have some different output because uh my zip code is 60502 so and i don't know uh what state it is or what it is right but it should give me a different type uh, Okay, uh, uh, see here the speed is three seconds. Uh, I want to set the speed between the commands to be, there should be a delay of three seconds, right? Uh, so that's why it was taking time. Okay, um, we have made some changes. Let me, uh, this is no longer going to be H Porter. This is going to be 
uh, G Bush, let's say. Uh, right, doesn't make much of a difference. Okay, let us uh, run this. Uh, but before running that, did I close the browser? I guess not, right? So anyway, uh, you see, it's 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 a good practice if we could uh, close the browser. But um, anyways, it's still running it um, now. Renters insurance. Uh, let's see. Oh, zip code is six zero five zero two. Um, let us see. Uh, let's guess what city it is. Uh, Aurora, right? Here is here is that city we are talking about, right? So Aurora. Um, okay, it has to enter not Harry anymore, George. And in the last uh, name, um, let's see. It has to enter Bush, right? Uh, there you want. There you go. Okay. Uh, street address was 555 Main Street um, and uh, date of birth uh, we said 1951 or something so let's see if it takes that um, there you go all right phone number was uh, 202 and uh, some number there it is email address was uh, gbush at gmail.com um, so uh, I mean to make the long story short what we are doing is uh, as you can see I made some changes in that script and it is taking that input here right okay i'm still playing with one set of data all right um now what if, if we have to try different combinations um now when you say try what do you mean by different combination um uh how about uh, twenty thousand different zip codes wow. um is it realistic that we try with twenty thousand you know what um, how much time do you think 20,000 zip codes is going to take to run this script? Um, just a wild guess. You know, don't be surprised if I say that um, that's going to be done in probably less than less than an hour or if I stretch too much because it depends on the machine and it depends on how fast uh, your internet connection is going to be and all that. So let's say be most like two hours. It is going to test for 20,000 zip codes in less than um, two hours. That is automation. That is power, power of testing using, you know, automated uh, uh, scripts. And that is what we are going to learn in this course. Okay, 1975. So Mr. Bush is going to pay $19.75 per month, right? Okay, let's uh, go back, take a look if our test is passed or fail. Here it is, the test is passed. And if you pay attention here in the bottom, if you see, I was reading that information back. And if you see, I read the court ID and I read monthly payment is 1975. How do you read that? Okay, that's what my course is all about. I'm going to be showing you how to read that. Here it is, monthly payment. Selenium, go and get the text. So I'm going to run what is called a get text method, which is going to read the price month. You might say that, uh, uh, how do you know that this is price month? Well, that's uh, the firebug and the fire path, and that's what I'll be showing you in that um, course. Well, um, so that was a, a, a brief, uh, not so brief anymore, I guess, because it took about like 40 minutes, I guess, uh, um, of a presentation of uh, how Selenium looks like and what you will be doing in this course. Um, so if you like what you are seeing here, then um, I uh want to see you back uh in um our uh course um we are trainingright.com and um, we have different um sets of courses um we do automation uh testing we do uh qtp we do selenium so there are a bunch of courses here as you can see um depending on what is your interest you could um register for that course uh, so this was uh, about Selenium. This presentation was uh, for Selenium. And uh, I thank you for your time. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on another um, presentation, uh, video presentation from trainingright.com. Until then, take care. Be good.